Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. You will see here I have a BG Fortress board on the wall. This is for a small flat. There is very limited circuits in here and I thought it'd be a good time to show you how I approach installing a consumer unit. So I've time-lapsed this installation. I'm going to talk through it, maybe play some music over it depending on how long that segment is. And we'll have a little chat about the key features of this board, some of the things that I found along the way and the methods and approaches I take in installing a consumer unit. Let's get straight on with it. So you can see I've got this BG Fortress board screwed to the wall. There are five fixing points in the back of there. I use the central one just to get it held in place and then use the four outer ones with washers to secure it to the wall. I'm using the Nipex flat cable stripping tool. If you've not tried these before, they are absolutely brilliant. You slide the cable straight through the tool, strip the outer jacket, and it slides straight off, giving a really neat and tidy cut on the back of those cables rather than drawing the CPC out, as people often complain about. I will still have to do that method on these larger 6mm cables using my weir croppers because it doesn't fit into the tool. It must max out at 2.5 or 4mm. I've not actually tried a 4mm, so I can't confirm or deny if that works these weir croppers are currently on offer at amazon which is where i got them from i think they're around 25 quid and they are super they're vde rated and they're really good sharp croppers i'm then going to go along this board now i've stripped all the outer insulation and just pop the cpc sleeving on that's just to prep everything so all of the insulation and sleevings in place ready to start dressing the board you can see i've got my tails through the back of the board as well ready i've used the grommet strip around that opening however the the hole in the wall behind that is actually smaller than the opening into the board so technically speaking it wasn't really necessary but good practice to fit it anyway um these instrumission grommets that have used on the rear entry of this board are for a purpose this is a cavity wall with timber inside and the potential for fire to propagate into the building um, if those aren't in place so i've made every best effort to prevent any fire getting out of this consumer unit in the worst circumstances reaching out into the building and obviously the opening the tails are going to come through can be sealed with a pad or appropriate sealant as required you can see there with the cpcs i start dressing them all the way loosely into the appropriate position lined up with the numbered slot on the terminal bar for the cpcs in the top of this board so i'm just leaving a bit of slack behind the din rail so somebody coming along to test can easily pull these cables forward and be able to work on the board in essence and a little loop up at the top as well just trying to leave as much length as practical whilst enabling a neat and tidy finish on this board and this will take about an hour to dress away. I'm not going to spend absolutely ages on it. We've got to be in the real world as well. That When you're getting paid to do a job either by a client or your boss, there is a time limit on these things for how long the task should take. And we can't be spending hours and hours and hours just trying to get the picture perfect board for Instagram. So this is going to end up looking reasonable, but I'm not going to waste a whole day on it is the short story of that comment. You see some of these CPCs I'm bending over. Now that's for any conductors that are under one and a half, half millimeters. Um, it's just because they're going into a terminal bar rather than into a cage clamp. You do have to double your cable ends over just to give a nice solid connection. If you're into a cage clamp, it's generally not that much of an issue as it will bite down onto the conductor anyway. But into your terminal bars on both the neutral and the CPCs, it's very much required to bend those ends over. See the main earth I've tucked right up the back there and put a nice little loop on, trying to get that into the earth bar as appropriate. And then we're just going to work along these CPCs. I am leaving a space in the MCBs and RCBOs between a bank of circuits and another bank of circuits. So I'm just trying to work out the number in here of how many circuits I've got and the spaces I need using all my fingers and toes to do the maths. You see there, we're just again trying to leave a bit of slack on these so they're coming up neatly into the terminal, but also, you know, the next person coming along to work on this board isn't left with about one millimetre of slack to get their test measurements when they're doing any ICR, for example. And again, we're going to pop all of these in before the DIN rail and other components are in the board because we've got all this space to work with. It's so much easier to dress your CPCs away and get your line and neutrals where you want them. That was me just checking what size consume unit I've actually got because I thought it was a 10-way board, but it turns out it's actually a 12, so I can have an extra space in there as well. So I'm just going to shuffle those along. And I actually make a mistake on these CPCs because I forget that the SPD takes up way one 
and I've started from number one on the terminal. So we're going to have to move these along later on, and you'll see me doing that when I realise as we start wiring away the final circuits. You see, we're just about there now with the CPCs. They're all up into this enclosure, and there's plenty of wiring room in this BG Fortress board. There's loads of room up above the overcurrent protected devices and plenty of room behind the din rail as well so i'm going to attempt to set the cabling out how i want it for my line and neutrals now and then we can um pop those into we're in a rough position ready to just drop into the top of those rcbos see i'm just using a few cable ties to secure the cpcs in the back of the board Lots of people don't use like like using cable ties on conductors inside consumer units. It makes it difficult for somebody coming along to test later on. And also you can sometimes increase the prospect of overheating due to grouping on certain cables. So I usually use them to set them into position, if you like, and then cut them off at the end. Gives things a better prospect of staying neat and tidy. Speaking about the overheating aspect, if you've got um, containment leading up to your consumer unit, generally all of the D-rating has been taken into account because of that, because a lot of cables, when they're in horizontal trunking, for example, will naturally lay on top of each other. And if you've got circuits under continuous and simultaneous load, then you will have to apply those D-rating factors. And if those things don't apply, then they don't apply because they're not going to be under simultaneous and continuous overload, so you don't need to worry about it. You can see I've loosely folded over those line of neutrals behind the DIN rail. That's just to make sure, again, there's a bit of slack there for somebody coming along to do the testing. They can pull the cables forward and be able to do their R1, R2, for example, without having an issue. Now, the SPD here was wired into the earth um, terminal on the earth bar rather than into wear one. And I guess that's because the MCB is in wear one, but the SPD is not. So I was of two minds of to put it into number one or to stick it into a terminal labeled as E. I just stuck it back where it was. So that's where it's gone on this one. You can see with the tails again, I'm using those weir croppers to cut the ends away. And then the Nipex Ergo Strip, which is amazing for tails. If you've not tried it on those before, it makes stripping your tails super duper easy rather than trying to get your croppers in there and trim and cut the ends away. So we're dressing those up and in now so they're neatly into the terminals. And of course, this will all be talked down at the end. So I'm just loosely nippling, nipping these down for the moment and we can start putting the rcbos in next and with these again you've got the option if you wish of cutting the fly leads down or arranging them behind the the din rail wedging them out of view or you can do as i'm going to attempt here make them up into a little bunch of cables and then tuck them away at the bottom of the board it really is dependent on how you want to approach it my own view is once you've cut those leads down, they're kind of set into that board. If they end up being taken out because of circuit change, it's difficult to then make use of that product somewhere else if it's going into a larger board. So I try and leave them the length they are when I can and wire them into the boards as neatly as possible. Sometimes when you're working in more cramped boards, you've got no option but to cut them down, ferrule the ends and pop them away into the neutral bar. You can see I'm just working along here now, popping those neutral fly leads into the neutral terminal bar and stripping ends off these final circuits and dropping them straight into the RCBOs. The hard work on all of that has been done when we made the original setting out and stripping off those outer insulation um, right at the start of this video. Um, you can see when I'm setting the RCBO into position, I'm using two fingers on top of the RCBO. So that's to set an even space for the loop. If you're consistent, whatever you use, you know, it can be two, three fingers, whatever you choose. Um, that loop will always be the same then if you grab the end of your conductors in the same space and cut and strip them. When you set them into the top of the RCBO, the loop and size will be exactly the same as the one prior to give a neat and tidy look if you're wanting to share these pictures on social media or as a YouTube video as I'm doing here. And again, my tool of preference for all of the stripping tasks inside, well, any electrical system, to be honest, is croppers. They do take a bit of getting used to if you're used to side cutters and using automatic strippers and such. But they're so much more versatile. It's one tool to carry around. They take up next to no space. They can strip. They can cut and cover off pretty much every aspect of wiring as an electrician, aside from screwing up the terminals, unless you are super talented. You see with the neutral fly leads again as we've moved along, I'm dropping these down behind the DIN rail and pretty much pulling them straight down and out the bottom. So we can run those then around to the neutral terminal bar and set them up in order. Again, taking note of the numbered sequence of those um, neutrals. 
And in this case, I wasn't able to make the mistake I'd made with the earth bar because the SPD is pre-wired into way one on that terminal bar. So it was around this stage I'd realized in my mind the mistake I'd made with those CPCs and we'll go along and amend that at the end. Currently deciding if I should do it there and then, but I decided to wait until the board was dressed away to see if there was any other deliberate mistakes I'd made in first setting out those CPCs. So again, here we're going to drop these RCBOs in and onto the DIN rail, pop the neutrals up and around the back, and then wire those in to the neutral terminal bar. Um, and again, the ends on these are already pre ferruled so there's no need to worry about any of that if you are using the existing set length from the manufacturer. And BG get this about right in fairness to them. It's always a tricky one for manufacturers with the length of those fly leads. You get complaints that they're too short to reach across the bigger boards or that they're way too long when you are trying to install them in those smaller boards. So it's a rock and a hard place. And I think they're about right. And to be fair, most of the other brands are getting it closer to the money more often than not these days as well. So we've just about worked our way to the cross the end of this board and tucked all those RCBOs away and in. I think we've got the one circuit there left and then we can start looking at getting the buzz bar in and some of the final bits and pieces of tidying up. So with the buzz bar on the, the BG Fortress board, it comes with um, a little clip of a jacket on the buzz bar itself rather than a clip on cover. So you don't get the, the hiding space, if you like, for any cables you are tucking into the bottom of the board. Just to point that out, there will be um, more on show than perhaps with the Proteus or Versa varieties where they do have those covers in place. And you can see here, I'm now just having a little look at those numbered neutrals and adjusting my CPCs into the right order. So we know that they're all gonna be in the right place for the next person coming along. You can take the approach of numbering your actual conductors as you would in a three phase, more complex board, but really on a small domestic consumer unit, that's not necessary in my opinion. I have done it before just for having a go with it and seeing how it how it panned out it doesn't hurt but equally if you pop everything into the right numbered terminal it's pretty obvious what is what and you can't go wrong so you can see here with these neutrals again i'm just loosely cable tying these together to tuck them away under the din rail and then to be able to place them in the bottom of the board and again if you've got any concerns around these cables being under continuous and simultaneous overload you need to factor that in when you are joining them together and don't really squeeze down on the cable tie to the point you're crushing the conductors it's just to loosely hold them in position so you can tuck them away and as I say, if you've got containment leading up to a distribution board or something of that nature, your D rating should already be well taken into account. I see I'm just getting the Instagram shot there that everybody needs. And now I'm trying to open up these cage clamps on the bottom of the RCBOs and tuck that in under there. Now there is a little knack to this that I was struggling with. So as you back these screws off, they were hitting the front cover of the RCBO and not opening the cage clamp. And it took me about a minute to realize that there is a little technique where you kind of have to angle your screwdriver down a bit to push the back of the cage clamp up so it goes into the recessed part of the breaker. So it just wasn't quite tucking in at the back. Um, you have to try it to know what, I'm, what I mean. It's hard to describe. But once you get the knack of it, they do open all the way up and you can get the buzz bar in. It was a little bit of a faff having not used this product for a very very long time myself um, just learning that again and then you can see once we've got it in there i always take the approach of fastening into the main line of the main switch and then going along to the end of those um, protective devices and getting a fastening there to try and keep the bus bar level and again we're trying to keep these breakers square and level i've seen people using clamps to squeeze everything together which is a great idea to keep it all nice and straight and solid obviously when you've got a space as i have here and no din rail blanks that becomes less straightforward but as long as you look at the overcurrent protect devices keep them square and central to each other they should stay roughly in the right place you can see a common gripe i've always had with bg boards of the past is the front covers not lining up and we had the same problem on this one now, usually it was just due to the din rails being a little bit weak and the tails perhaps putting pressure on the top of those um, connections, forcing them down a little bit and not quite lining up. But in this case, there was absolutely none of that. Those tails are straight through the wall and loose. So there is no issue of the um, components being pushed forward because of that. It's just a really tight opening where the MCBs and RCBOs pop through and the MCB was ever so slightly higher than the RCBOs and it just wouldn't quite slide on. 
you can see once I'd sorted that out, we were up and away. Now, the BG Bod does come with a clever little tool to lock the front cover open, which was handy. They do say to leave that with the board. It's magnetic, but my own view is to take it away because you can guarantee a consumer will leave it open permanently. And the label sheet is a little bit lacking, as I'll talk about later on in this video. But it is what it is. I think it's just an older variety of label sheet that maybe hasn't been updated for a while. And generally speaking, we'd use our own label printers anyway. I just like to try and give the boards a good run out and see what comes in the kit. So you know if you happen to have forgot your own label printer, the manufacturer's got you covered. Otherwise, I think that came together quite nicely. I'm happy with the outcome. Let's run along with the video and see what I think at the end. So I hope you enjoyed watching the time lapse of me installing this BG Fortress board. I've tried to show how I go about approaching consumer unit installations step by step and talk through it in the hope that some of the learners and apprentices following along from my content might get something from that. About the board in specific, for the price point it's hard to knock it in fairness. This comes as a kit from the wholesaler apart from one RCBO that I've got in addition to what was in that kit. Uh, very reasonably priced, they're double pole, they're type A, they have us covered for EV and PV. As with everything though, there are improvements that could be made and with BG one of them is the historical issue I've always had in terms of the front cover going on. You may have noticed on the time lapse I had a bit of an issue getting it to go over the MCB and RCBOs. They just don't seem to stay in alignment quite right, whichever way you go about approaching it. And it's always a bit of a fiddle and at the end of a job when you've been installing a consumer unit it can be a bit frustrating. This one wasn't so bad, I managed to get it lined up quickly enough and dropped back on. So we were all good on that front. Um, another issue with the board was the um, cage clamps for the bus bar. You may notice when I was trying to back them off, there's obviously a knack to it that I wasn't used to. This is the first BG Fortress board I've installed in a long, long time. But if you don't get it quite lined up right, it backs the front screw off into the plastic case of the MCB. Well, it wasn't the MCB, that was fine, the RCBOs. And it doesn't open the cage clamp. So I was on my hands and knees wondering what was going on, but you just have to give it a little little angle upwards is the best way I can describe it. And then it opens up and everything is absolutely fine. The labelling kit that comes with it as well is also a bit lacking for the modern day installation. There's no SPD label, no EV label, no PV. It's always a frustration as an installer when we've forgotten our label printers and the manufacturers haven't got our backs with things like that and we end up with handwriting on there. So that's something that could be improved. And I'm sure it will be as time moves along with um, BG's consumer unit developments. And it's not unique to them, other brands are similar as well, just to say. Also the um, grommet strip that comes with it, again, not knocking BG, all brands do this. I absolutely hate the stuff. If you've got an opening in the back of one of your boards, please supply an appropriate plate or entry point that clips in and locks in for us to use. And in fairness to BG, there is one of these for the knockout on the back of this board. However, these don't stay in very well. They do pop out super duper easy. Um, I would have still happily used it on this board, but this is um, a partition wall between two properties and um, there is a void with timber in. So I wanted to use the fire sealed glands and then around where the tails enter, we can use intermeshment pads and seal all that up as well to give this the best prospect of not propagating any fire if there's an issue into that cavity and further out into the building. So that's the reason I've gone for the approach I have today. And again, yeah, the time lapse is just to try and share a bit of the stuff that I do in approaching consumer units. I hope people have maybe found that useful. Um, it is what it is really. These look how they look, don't they? I, not one to sort of compare one brand to another because it's just a white box on the wall. It's got a nice shiny look on it, it's okay. The lids now close. One of the problems I had with BG in the past is that the lids would stay open. They now stay closed, but they do supply this little clever clip. It's just something simple, but it keeps the lid open while we're labeling it and working on it. So that's a nice touch. They do say to leave it with the board. I'm not sure I agree with that because you can guarantee a client or consumer would pop this in there just to leave it open for them to keep messing about resetting breakers. So my own view is that take that with you as an installer and keep it in your toolbox. If you've collected a few up, recycle them. I wouldn't leave them with the boards because you can guarantee they'll end up being used in a way that they shouldn't be. But it is nice that they put that in there. It makes life simpler for us. And yeah, it's not, not a bad product at the price it's at. I can't really knock it. I'm quite happy to install it. We install a lot of Lucicio and BG equipment. Their outdoor sockets are exceptional value. The LED lighting range, as much as any LED lighting, is reasonable quality and at a decent price point. We're actually specking um, a large project at the minute using Lucicio LED light fittings. And there has been a bit of debate over on Instagram amongst people regarding the outdoor consumer unit discussion that 
blew up via um, Jamie Blayton and I made a video around an outdoor consumer unit on a job that we were on and there's been a few people make some very silly and childish accusations that are irritating but nothing um, super duper important in the grand scheme of things but I just wanted to talk about that a little bit and cover it off because some of these people who've you know come forward with these kind of issues and discussions are often talking about positivity supporting other people being kind and all the rest of it and yet they've seen a little bit of content that they didn't like of mine and they felt it um, necessary to come to me and complain about it and then publicly so as well actually and it seems a little bit out of order as far as i'm concerned because i stick to the subjects at all time it's never about an individual it's never about a particular brand and until Jamie started mentioning British General or BG and their outdoor boards, my only experience of outdoor consumer units was actually from a different manufacturer. And there are two huge nationwide national installers on Instagram who share posts almost daily of these other manufacturers' boards being installed outside. And they're never done correctly. There is no regard for pollution degree ratings and any of the other considerations that I've mentioned in those videos. And somebody seemed to get upset that I'd shared a BG board in a scrap pile. You can go back and watch the video. You can ask the customer because they are a key part of Apprentice One to One. And that board was on the wall directly above that scrap pile. Matthew removed it and chucked it straight on the pile. And I was recording footage for a YouTube video. And as always, everything gets included. It's part of the job that was put aside for recycling. It's not knocking BG in any way for that. The product in the way it was installed under a carport is questionable as I said in the video as if it was suitable for that but it is what it is I mean the childish level that some of these things are going to are really quite frustrating and I've had to step away from that myself it seems like people want to moderate and control the content that I might be sharing you know you've done a good video but why do this why do that none of your business I'll make whatever content I like and I realise 99% of the you guys watching this video now will have no idea what I'm on about. It's of no importance to you whatsoever and I apologise for mentioning it. But it's been bothering me. And my YouTube channel is all about sharing my thoughts, feelings and what I think of the electrical industry and the way I work. And I will never change that. I stand rock solid behind every single thing I've done with Apprentice One to One. With every single piece of content I've shared on social media. And the way I treat people in the real world and online will continue as normal, whether anyone else likes it or not. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments around any of this, please do drop them in below and I'd be happy to try and help. There'll be a link in the description alongside this video where you can go off and read the data sheet from BG. They do all come in the box. There's even a little instruction sheet for using this clip, which was handy because I wasn't sure where you stuck it to get the lid to stay open as daft as that sounds. And all of the talk settings and such are in there as well. And rest assured, this board is going to be tested and talked down as per normal. Thank you all very much for watching. Please get involved in the comments and I'll see you on the next one.